Okay, so Ben will be talking about um, human level artificial general intelligence by 2020 if we really, really try as his second talk at the Humanity Plus um, conference in Hong Kong. Would you like to give us a few words or a uh, brief introduction about what that's what the, the talk is about? When the AI field, the field of artificial intelligence, was founded in the late 1950s, its goal was to create thinking machines that would be as smart as people and then ultimately even smarter than people. The field sort of drifted away from that over the years because it was found to be a very difficult goal and the field became more preoccupied with highly specialized highly task-specific sorts of artificial intelligence, like machines that play chess, or machines that can drive cars under certain conditions, or machines that can solve certain planning and scheduling problems. A number of us in the AI field believe that now is the time to refocus on the grand goal of AI, what I like to call AGI, artificial general intelligence. We believe that due to a combination of advances in allied fields, the time is ripe for a frontal assault on the AGI problem. We have much faster computers now than ever before. We have a lot more knowledge about human cognition and the human brain. We have much, much better computing algorithms and much better computer software than we've had in the past. Putting all these pieces together, we're in a really good position to do what the founders of the AI field wanted to do back in the 50s. Toward that end, I co-founded an open source AGI project called OpenCog in 2008. And we have a pretty detailed design within the OpenCog project a design for a software system that we believe will be able to think like a human and ultimately better than a human. We have a lot of work to do to finish implementing the design. Then we will need to teach it, much as one teaches a human baby. It will become smarter and smarter over time in interaction with the world and with us. We believe that if we push full speed ahead on this project, we could viably reach completion in, in 10 years or, or maybe even less. Getting there that fast won't be just a matter of having the science and engineering right. It'll be a matter of having enough funding to pay a sufficiently large team, enough passion and dedication on the part of the team. Predicting the timing of a complex project like this is always difficult, but Nevertheless, I think these things could happen a lot faster than anyone thinks if there was real focus put on it. Look at what they did in a few years in the Manhattan Project or the Human Genome Project. With that kind of focus on AGI, we could get a long way pretty quickly. An AGI Manhattan Project would be awesome. Um, is there any, like a, there's a few different approaches to uh, artificial general intelligence. One is the software approach um, and trying to sort of write the, the programs or the algorithms that sort of uh, represent intelligence rather than just how intelligence is represented in the human brain. Um, and of course there's reverse engineering the brain. Um, which approach or which bits of these approaches is uh, open cog taking? Our primary approach in open cog now is computing and cognitive science based rather than neuroscience based. We're not trying to emulate how the human brain functions. The OpenCog software platform in principle could be used as a platform for computational neuroscience. However, my view is that the currently existing data about how the human brain works is not really sufficient to support neuroscience-driven AGI at the moment. 
once neuroscience advances and we have more data about the brain, that may be the best approach. For now, what we're doing is architecting our system on the high level based on cognitive science, cognitive psychology, with some input from neuroscience where there is sufficient neuroscience knowledge. Then we are filling in the details using computer science, using the best known algorithms to perform each of the functions identified by our cognitive science-based architecture. Okay. So um, now, people coming along to the conference are going to see your talk. What, what would they uh, take away from it, and what, what would they be able to get, and what would they be interested in coming to um, listen to what you have to say about this? Well, the OpenCog design, of course, is a large and complex beast. I'm currently in the final stages of writing an 850-page book going through the details of the OpenCog plan for making a thinking machine. So in a brief talk, I'm certainly not going to be able to tell you the full recipe for making a thinking machine, but I hope I can convey some of the spirit and some of the key ideas underlying what we're doing with OpenCog. So the main message I'd like to get across is this is not science fiction. This is not some insane fantasy. There are serious AI scientists with serious academic and industry backgrounds who right now are working hard on a project implementing a software design that appears to be capable ultimately of leading to human level intelligence. So I want to present a case that this is real and concrete work just as worthy of focus and attention as imaging the brain, as making computers to play chess or drive cars, as any of the other less ambitious things that are getting focus and resources these days. Sure, yeah, I mean like... I, I think that getting a AGI right would um, probably be the most powerful catalyst for for change, uh, positive change in the world if it's done. Absolutely. I mean, when you talk about the singularity, when you think about what technology, what advance could have the potential to transform everything radically for the better, get rid of death and disease minimize material scarcity, solve the psychological and social problems that have pleased humanity at least since the dawn of civilization. The one thing that clearly has the potential to solve all these problems and more is the advent of minds vastly more intelligent and capable than our own. Certainly there are large potential risks associated with AGI technology. But if the AGI is architected correctly, it can be not only more intelligent, but also more compassionate than human beings. We can have a tremendously beneficial outcome, literally better than we're able to imagine with our merely human minds. It's funny, a lot of people just uh, uh, turn off switch off when they hear the idea of an intelligence greater than their own or something, you know, something that advanced, thinking it's in that little, that little literary genre of sci-fi and, you know, therefore it's not possible. <laughs> well, you know, when Vannevar Bush and Ted Nelson in the 50s and 60s sketched their vision of the internet, mm. everyone thought they were nuts and basically everyone just ignored them. Even when the internet was launched in the mid-90s, almost nobody saw that it would become a worldwide phenomenon, transforming social life, business, academia, arts, and so forth. People just aren't that good at seeing things that are not part of their daily experience. And then when the new thing comes along, people tend to adapt pretty quickly and pretty well. I'll certainly look forward to this talk. Um, it'll be a great conference. So yeah, look, looking forward to seeing you and many others there. Um, yeah, so it'll be awesome. 
It'd, It'd be, be great. great. And I would add, we're also going to show some demonstrations of OpenCog in action controlling video game characters in a simple game world. It's nowhere near up to the human level yet, mm -hmm. but the current OpenCog system does control a little simulated robot in a simulated world. It builds stuff with blocks, and it emotes and understands the human beings relating to it to some level. So as well as sketching the grand vision, we'll show a little bit of our incremental work toward that level that's going on now in a lab at Hong Kong Polytechnic University in collaboration with my company, Novamente LLC. So I hope the talk can be a mix between the grand long-term vision, which as you say is about the most important thing happening on the planet right now, and the concrete incremental steps that we're taking in the lab in Hong Kong to work toward that vision. That's interesting. Do these video game characters learn from interaction with people? They do. They learn from interactions with people, and they learn from their own experience interacting with the world. Okay, interesting. Oh, well that, that'll be fun. All right. No. Much like a human baby learns. A human baby starts out not knowing very much. They interact with the world, they interact with others, and before you know it, they're an adult. And AI can go through the same process, but the difference is it can modify its own thought process in ways that people can't, and it can keep augmenting its underlying hardware infrastructure. So it doesn't have to stop when it reaches the level of a human adult. It can just keep on going. Gosh, I've got so many ideas popping into my head. It'd be great to have this open cog sort of game character interfacing with Facebook or something like that. Get all the transhumanists to jump on board and start interacting with it while they're on doing what they do, you know, a good two hours a day. Anyway. Oh, well, like an old Tamagotchi, except boosted, powered with open cog superpower. Yeah, that'll be awesome. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Oh, sorry, were you going to say something? No. <laughs> All right, no worries. <laughs> Looking forward to the conference. Uh, see you there, and uh, see if you get right. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was way more than five minutes. But uh, once <laughs> once I get started with the with the BS, I start to wake up a bit. So, yeah.